Hello and welcome to my Rond or XKD power meter review. This is the box it comes in, slightly smaller than the 4i and it's nice and minimal in terms of packaging. It's a mountain bike crank Dior XT and when you turn it over looking at the power meter it looks exactly like an XKD power meter. Lo and behold, the XKD app identifies it as an X Power XKD power meter, which is nice to know. Here's my setup it's a Power 2 Max Type S linked to a Turbo Moon, an Elite Turbo Moon trainer, which can measure power through the Mizuro B Plus sensor, but I found this didn't correlate well with my. Power 2 Max Type S and my Power 2 Max Type NG. So what I've done is create a custom power curve. And as you can see, there's good correlation between the Power 2 Max and the derived power uh, on my Turbo Moon using my custom power curve. The initial part demonstrates a discrepancy where the derived power is too high and that's because the oil starts off cold and it needs some time and some moderate uh, effort to heat the oil. It's the other way around to how I would expect. I would expect the um, oil to heat up and become less viscous and therefore the flywheel speed would be faster in the less vis viscous oil and therefore the derived power would be greater but it is in fact the other way around and if anyone can explain that I'd be most grateful. Here's the custom power curve that I've made. It is uh, based on many many data points that um, excluded the initial cold oil state so just the steady state when the oil had heated up. And I have to do this because um, the Power2 Max used the BB386 spindle and I can't attach the Rond or the 4i to that. So I've swapped crank sets here and uh, now I can attach the Rond power meter. And because it's a mountain bike crank, it's increased the Q factor uh, ever so slightly. This is it in use and um, there's a fair bit of uh, ticking of that needle up and down on the Zwift app and the Zwift app hasn't got any power smoothing whereas the actual Zwift uh, program when you're looking on your screen that has some power smoothing. Now here it makes it slightly more difficult if you're focusing on your power rather than your cadence it's, uh, it's better to focus on your cadence and get a smooth power output. I think that is because it's a left-sided only power meter and it's got half the temporal resolution of a left and right power meter. Anyway, this is the result. This is the last part of the workout, excluding the part where the oil needed to heat up. And we've got great agreement between the Rond power meter and the derived power from the Elite Turbo Moon. You can see there's inherent power smoothing in the derived power because of uh, the flywheel inertia, which my power curve doesn't take into account. So your troughs don't go down quite as low as quickly and the peaks don't go up quite as high as quickly. This is what it looks like when you're on Zwift. You can see the power at the bottom uh, correlated with heart rate and you can see that when you're doing a workout on Zwift. But there's no big power spikes and no power dropouts. All works exceedingly well. Now we need to compare this to the 4i and so this is the 4i mounted and we can see on the Zwift app we have exactly the same problem. The needles ticking up and down uh, rather a lot. 
which makes it a little bit difficult to know exactly where you're at when you're concentrating on power. And as I say, you should be concentrating on cadence. And my cadence is quite low here because I've just changed the crank set and I wasn't used to the gearing. If we wait another 10 seconds, you can see what happens at 400 watts. And up we go to 400 and I overshoot and then undershoot. And then I find it quite difficult to keep in the power zone with that needle ticking up and down. Again, I'm playing this wrong. I should be concentrating on my cadence and then I get a much smoother result with my power. When we go back down, I get stuck at 32 watts, just ever so briefly, and it doesn't come up quite as quickly as I'd expect with a dual left and right power meter. This is the result of the entire workout with the 4i power meter, and um, I haven't cut off the beginning because immediately before I'd used the ROND power meter and I'd heated the oil up. So uh, here it's already heated and so we've got a good agreement between the derived power and the measured power on the 4i. So how does this compare to the ROND? Well, let's have a look at the last part of the workout uh, where I achieved broadly similar power and uh, we've got great agreement. Uh, you can you can't tell the difference between the 4i and the ROND. And actually, if we take the relative difference between the derived power and the uh, measured power, all these data points for the ROND and all the data points for the 4i, and then perform a student's t-test, there's no significant difference between the uh, ROND and the 4i. The p-value was 0.5. So, um, excellent agreement with um, derived power and also um, uh, visually and statistically no difference between, between the 4i and the ROND power meter. I got a great deal on the 4i power meter for my commuting bike but the ROND power meter is a mountain bike um, mounted on a mountain bike crank and I couldn't get the same deal as the 4i so I thought I'd take a risk and buy the ROND for the mountain bike. Here's a, an hour long workout with the uh, ROND power meter and it does look a bit of a mess but that is really because we've crammed a whole hour into um, a very narrow graph and if we put some power smoothing on here uh, it looks a lot better. I mean, power smoothing is fairly pointless but uh, that just makes it look a, a little bit nicer. Here we just zoom in, and so I've just zoomed into one section of that workout, and you can see great correlation. Of course, you can see the inherent power smoothing from my derived um, power. Um, and here we have the whole workout, excluding the first part where the oil in the turbo trainer had to heat up. You can see that the average power is uh, in the uh, blue line. The average power is um, the average power for the ROND. And in the green line, it's the average power for the uh, derived power. And there's only a 1.65% difference between the two. The 4i was very similar with a 1.4% difference over the whole duration of a workout. And the power to max was a slightly higher difference. And you'll note that all these differences are positive. The power to max was plus 2.7%. Now that's predictable because the power to max is a left and right sided power meter. And my left right power balance is 4951. So you can expect that the left only power meters to read slightly lower. But note they all read above my derived power because when I created the power curve it does read ever so slightly low. Now when we take into account uh, power to max the type S has a uh, plus or minus two percent published accuracy and the um, type NG is plus or minus one percent the 4i is plus or minus one percent and the 
rond or the XKD is plus or minus 1%, but of course, because of the price, I had to check that. When you take all that into account, you can see that the rond performs exceedingly well. So it's likely to be in the range of the published accuracy. And I'll just finish again on the slide that shows the 4i and the rond side to side or one above the other and we can see that virtually indistinguishable. So um, when you're looking at uh, mountain bike power meters, well looking just at the cranks if you're going for a, as cheap an option as you can, uh, the XKD or the rond really is far far cheaper than any of the others and I thought I was taking a little bit of a risk here and uh, so I had to check it and it turns out that it really correlates exceptionally well with all my power meters uh, and especially here we can see it correlating well with the 4i. Of course um, there are other considerations such as support um, I bought a Rond because it was cheaper than even the XKD, even though the Rond is a rebadged XKD. Um, and I just wonder if that's got a, um, implications for support. Uh, you see many manufacturers uh, taking um, generic Chinese technology and they can put out a product on eBay or Amazon and then months later all is sold out and the manufacturer disappears into obscurity. Anyhow, I thought it was worth the risk and we've got a great power meter, we've got great agreement, so um, I'm definitely very happy with the power saving. Uh, let's hear your comments below and uh, thank you for listening.